Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So we're going to look at titrations. Now a titration is all about finding the concentration of an unknown solution. That is what its definition is. So what is the concentration of this solution? Now remember concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by volume. So we'll keep that in mind for now. Okay, so Kevin, how does a titration work? All right, so what we do is we're going to take this liquid that we're trying to determine its concentration and we're going to place it over here. We then take another solution. Now, this is something that we do know, so we know its concentration. We're then going to pour this solution, whose concentration we know, into this device over here called a burette. And so we remember, we know the concentration of that liquid. Now this liquid at the bottom, which is the one that we're trying to determine, because we have poured this liquid into a, this type of glass, we know what the volume is. We can see how much we have, and so we do have the volume. Now we need to know what is in the liquid. We need to know what type of acid and what type of base, because we need to know how the reaction is going to work. And so let's say we are told that this is HCl and then this one is potassium hydroxide. So how would they react? Now remember in the previous lesson we learned that if you have an acid plus a metal hydroxide then you should form a salt and water. So the water is H2O and then the salt would just be KCl. You see, so this is where it becomes very important for you to know how certain chemicals react. They're not going to tell you this in the exams. I mean, sometimes they will, but many times they don't. Okay, then what you want to do is make sure that it's balanced because the numbers in the front here are very important. But in this one, it is balanced. All right, so now, and, I, and by the way, I've just added that the concentration there is one mole per decimeter. So what happens now is we take some type of liquid called an indicator and we put a few drops inside here. So let's say that when you put that indicator inside the solution, the solution stays pink. And because KOH is a base, then it means that that indicator stays pink in this type of base. And let's say that this type of indicator has no color in acid. So what's going to happen now is we're going to look at this little tap over here and we're going to open it slightly and we're going to let a few drops of that acid drop into here. Now when it drops into here it's going to react with the KOH and so what happens is that you're going to have less KOH after those few drops. And so two things I need to show you. The level within our acid has dropped and the base has become less pink to show that some of it has been neutralized. Okay, so what we then do is we add a few more. So we open this tap a little bit more and we let a few more drops go. And so now it's even lighter and so we are almost getting there. Remember the type of indicator that we're using makes the solution go completely colorless once there is no base. So you get different kind of indicators. Some indicators have color in acid and some indicators have color in base. This particular one was bright pink in base and colorless in acid. Okay, so we need to add a little bit more acid because our solution is almost colorless. What that means is the KOH, all of the KOH molecules have nearly been destroyed or neutralized. So we add a little bit more acid and just at the point where it starts going colorless, we close this tap over here and now we can measure the volume. So now we can see how much volume we used in this solution. So now we have the volume over there. Now here's where it gets very interesting. So now for the top solution, for the, for the acid, we now know its volume and we know its concentration. So if we look at this equation here, if we have the concentration and the volume, then we can get the number of moles that we used. So we can rearrange that equation to get N equals to C multiplied by V. The concentration is one and the volume that we used, let's pretend that that was 20 milliliters. But now just remember 20 milliliters is the same 
as 0.02 decimeters and that's what you've got to use in the concentration calculation and so if you do this we get 0.02 moles and that's for the HCl of HCl then you come down here to your equation and you look at the ratio of HCl and KOH in this case it's 1 to 1 and so that means there must have been 0.02 moles of KOH so now we have the moles of KOH and so now if you have a look at the information that we have for KOH we have its volume and we have its moles let's say that the original volume was 50 moles and so now we can use this formula again to find the concentration because the moles is 0.02 the volume remember 50 moles is 0.05 decimeters so we'll say 0.05 and then if we had to calculate that we end up with a concentration of 0.4 moles per decimeter and so we are complete why because the goal of a titration is to find the concentration of an unknown liquid so guys that is the basics of a titration please watch this video again if you have to make sure that it's it makes perfect sense to you because in the next couple of lessons we're going to be practicing this and perfecting it thank you for watching